Hello, I am Ritha Che, and I work at Usong Information College in Daejeon. Um, I am going to talk to you about communicating with Korean students, crossing the cultural barrier, and um, we're going to examine this communication between the teachers and students, um, and what kind of cultural misunderstandings could arise between the teachers here in Korea and the students. Um, we're going to go over verbal and nonverbal cues and how to limit our jargon. Um, also, what negative preconceptions and cultural differences we could have. Uh, we need to learn to recognize these issues and through empathy and rapport and also CQ, which is cultural IQ. For first of all, we need to answer um, two questions. Why is it important to communicate clearly between the teacher and the students? Um, clear communication is definitely required. It provides great teaching experience for the students and also for the teacher. Um, what kind of cultural and permanent misunderstandings can occur between the teacher and these students? Well, students can become anxious and they don't respond to you um, because of different things. We'll go over that. Um, they are confused from misunderstanding our jargon, which is words that we speak to them. Um, teachers can show bias with preconceptions and ideals that they come to the classroom with in, from their own culture and their own thinking, their own ideas. First of all, verbal and nonverbal communication. Okay, of course, verbal communication is your spoken word, um, which is face to face, you're on the telephone, you're on the radio, you're on the television or any other media. Um, when we have verbal communication, we want to be clear and honest. Um, words are important, super important. Um, and the message is of the utmost importance. Um, and we are comfortable in confrontational situations. That's mostly Western um, way of viewing things. Nonverbal communication is through body language, gestures, the way you dress and act, um, how you stand even, and even what you smell like. <laughs> and that uh, Asian cultures versus Western culture, the ideas. Um, the aim in West, uh, Asian cultures is to keep things harmonious. Um, Nonverbal language is employed. Uh, sometimes when you look at students, you can see some of the nonverbal cues that they are giving off. Um, the person with the message is indispensable, meaning that they'll hang on every word from the professor or the teacher. Um, and they avoid a situation where there is confrontation. Okay. Um, another way uh, that there's a difference in communications is um, in Western cultures, we are very direct. And our aim is to be clear and honest, and our words are fundamental, and the message of the utmost importance. We're comfortable in confrontational situations. Asian cultures usually indirect communication. The aim is to keep things harmonious. And we went over this already. I see what I did. Um, I double, I made something else. Huh. Okay, anyway, 
The person with the message is indispensable. It means that sometimes they will hang on to your every word. Um, and we all, they also avoid situations where there is confrontation. What works in a Korean classroom? Okay. I do a variety of many different things. Um, actually, when I was writing this, I put all this stuff up. Um, the idea is that Korean students work well in groups, okay? And if you keep a certain pattern with them, and I also use a gamification. Oh, they love games of any kind. It doesn't matter how old they are. They like it. Um, my biggest thing is I do use Kahoot, and I've used it for many, many years. And now I'm kind of a, I guess you could say I'm an expert, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Anyways, um, this semester I was going to use some new concepts and stuff. I tried it the first week, and it didn't work. Um, I tried to use an escape room or, or just um, where they can go and click on different areas here and follow the links easily. But I realized that it didn't work this semester. So I changed back to my old way. And basically the old way is just using the LMS, of course. So it's basically the same idea this escape room area same idea but it you just put it all on LMS okay so some of the things I use ex especially is Glockster which is um, a poster PPT thing you can make and instead of um, a PPT where you have to go like this, like I'm on now. Um, you go and you are on one page and they can click on um, audio that you make. They can click on other things that you make. Um, actually, I could show um, Glockster. I should have had it ready. But let me see if it'll work. Okay, hold on a second. Glockster, I find so simple. And the students can go there as a link. And there's so many areas that you can use um, that helps the student. Let me see if I can get it over on here. I watch my time, don't I? See, I don't know if you can see this. Okay, it's waiting. See, sometimes um, media doesn't work when you want it to work. <laughs> so, okay, logging in. I'm usually ready and everything for the classroom for sure. Um, I've recently started using the premium service because you can add your students and they can do projects and stuff so that is one thing I'm going to use in the classroom in, as an activity they will make their own poster so for example let's see this one hospital equipment this is our lesson for next week Kind of going on a tangent here but um hopefully it'll help go with the the thing with our the demonstration or whatever i'm doing here <laughs> whatever i'm doing anyways <laughs> sounds like i'm not very professional here is it um as you are teaching especially with zoom it's really nice this side place here that 
you can type you can type right there and they can see everything that you're typing um, on this poster basically you can click on the pictures check that a wheelchair is present and you click and you ask what is this oh it's a wheelchair okay you can have videos um, also you have yeah all kinds of videos so that's basically how I do it um, let me see and they have the vocabulary and all that stuff there and if you look up here you could even go and get the attachments the puzzles and the conversation that is being used and this is public so you can use it anyways okay let's go out so I use the posters. I uh, there's a new thing called flow code. You can put all your. It's kind of like an LMS, but on the cell phone, and they can just go from the cell phone. is really nice and cool. Something to look for. Um, I was using Teacher Made, but because LMS is just as easy, I made a regular generic worksheet that they can use each week to fulfill all the things they need to do but and also Oodlu, which I haven't used yet because it's new to me and I've got to get used to it also but Kahoot is my number one gamification and they do personalized learning okay so again students work well in groups and if you keep up a routine they get to know how things are going and they don't get as stressed okay um in our speaking and in our learning like in education or in other um, business or anything we all have jargon okay uh, these are words that basically only our subject knows and of course um, students don't know that if you if you go to the doctor and you know a little bit of Korean yeah same idea I don't understand medical uh, jargon in Korean if they said it in English yeah I'll understand it so when you're with your students reduce your academic jargon and be very simplistic in your words even if it has to be the smallest words ever um, yeah until the students are familiar with you you can start teaching them extra words like that but in the meantime make it simple um, sarcasm oh my goodness sarcasm limit it because again students don't know uh, reduce the use of sarcasm and it is an understood only later if you teach them students will learn um, my husband um, he also oh by the way my husband is korean um, he didn't ever understand sarcasm and he still doesn't sometimes so miscommunication can occur through sarcasm um, they totally will misunderstand you so for example if we say oh that's so crazy or that's so cool you know just something interesting like yeah sarcasm they won't get it they won't get it at all um, in the classroom, building a rapport and showing empathy for your students, I think is so necessary. Um, and we learn from each other. So um, Gandhi said this, a teacher who establishes rapport with the taught becomes one with them, learns more from them than he teaches them. He who learns nothing from his disciples is worthless whenever I talk with someone I learn from him I take from him more than I give him okay sometimes uh, teachers in Korea will come 
and they just think they are everything. Um, I'm not saying every teacher, but a lot of teachers that happens, I mean, that's a preconception of a, a bias or anything like that. But build that rapport with the students. And that's why gamification and group work really does work with these students. So learning your empathy and rapport. I'm doing this presentation so differently than what my paper is all about. I mean, it, it is the same subject, but I like to talk rather than read the presentation. So you're not so bored. Anyways, kind of read between the lines, talking between the lines. Okay. Anyway, building that rapport and sh showing empathy to the students um, goes so far here in Korea. Um, the students know that if you show that empathy, the kindness, they love kindness. I mean, most any people do, but it just seems so much easier. And I often ask them questions. Um, I show them the, my real self. Um, I laugh. I joke with them, but I try to keep it, you know, um, simple and make them want to study. Okay. Um, next, we're going to talk about CQ or cultural IQ, okay? Um, we have negative preconceptions that we come to the classroom with. We have our cultural differences. Preconceptions are ideas about Koreans and their culture. And if you're new off the boat, Sometimes we bring our American or Western, if you want to call I'm American, so our Western culture and our Western thinking to the classroom, thinking the students will understand everything the way you teach. Um, intercultural competence. Learn about your students before you come to Korea. Learn about Korea. Learn about the culture and how it works together. Like we said before, um, Western people, we are very outspoken and we think our words are so important while the, the students, they're more laid back in a way, if you kind of see it that way, maybe. Um, anyways, Develop through your research and eventually through your experience, um, you will learn the cultural differences. Um, for me, I there's a few times I still have preconceptions, even though I've been here for so long. Um, but you have to focus and say, ah, okay. Oh, it's not like that. So... Using empathy in the classroom and even on Zoom, um, you know, we can't be as strict as we are in the classroom as we are on Zoom because you can't really scold every student. Stop looking at your phone. Do Stop doing this. Stop doing that, you know. So also... They might have family members in the home that are there and cause commotion or something. And they have their animals. And I would I would show my I show my animals and I they show me theirs and that kind of builds a rapport. Um, develop a united curriculum for these spaces. In other words, Bring the two together. Um, breakout rooms and the classroom. You can still use breakout rooms in the classroom. Put 
match the students in the classroom. See, I was using, uh, actually, I have a split schedule. Um, half the students in class and half on Zoom at the same time. So I have to unite those curriculums so that they can work together. Um, so the ones in the classroom, Zoom with the ones at home. That way I can go through the classroom and that's how I can see the breakout rooms really easily instead of going click, click, click and, you know, only one group at a time. So it's easy to um, unite your curriculum into these spaces. Um, dig deep for creativity. Be creative. If you look back on the the um, Glockster poster and stuff that I do, that takes some time, uh, less time actually than a PPT. Anyways, develop your CQ, your cultural IQ, so that your negative preconceptions can change and you can look inside yourself and say, ah, I need to change this. I can see my students aren't understanding or aren't getting this. Okay, um, when it comes to the Zoom breakout rooms and classroom at the same time, and everybody's on Zoom, but the, the teacher can walk around the classroom. So I, I made up some things for etiquette in Zoom and etiquette in the classroom. Basically, they're the same. Um, a few differences. Um, be on time. Be ready. Have your computer or phone ready before the class time. Same thing. Come into the classroom before class time. Presentation. Turn your video on. Be dressed nicely. Um, some of my students would um, just use their pajamas. Well, I don't mind that. And I guess that is also something you can be a little bit empathetic about. And it does build more rapport when they are dressed like that. But for me, as my, I would get up <clears throat> and dress nicely for the camera. And also tell your students to be right in the view of the camera. Because it's hard to teach sometimes when you can't see them. They should mute themselves. And of course, in, in the classroom, not talk while the teacher's talking, of course. Um, headphones, it could be easier to hear them. If you both use headphones and they use the headphones. Um, participation, be focused, attentive, and active participation. Participant, no cell phones. Um, again, same thing. Be focused and attentive in the classroom, no cell phones. Again, unless they're being used for... Um, gamification, which I use a lot. And they have no time to really use their phones, actually. It helps. Communication. Speak clearly, look up when speaking, stay on topic. Hey, I don't stay on topic sometimes, but <laughs> that's also building a rapport with your students. If you can laugh and you can um, own up to your mistakes or something that they call you out on. Um, that's respect. You're being respectful to them and kind and considerate to each other. So that's Zoom and the classroom. I use flipped classroom and most people know what flipped classroom is. It's personalized learning and gamification. Um, personalized learning, it helps the students on their own terms and they can do it as slow or fast as they want and I notice that if I give a challenge in like Kahoot and then we come to the classroom and we do a uh, live Kahoot their scores go up and it's amazing how much they learn and all that and it's fun and all. Um, you can use 
everything in your Kahoot challenge and also presentations on Kahoot. I have that extra, um, more professional, I actually pay for it for my by myself. Um, challenge the students to work in their own time and they will f have fun. They can use flashcards, they can practice again, they can do tests on Kahoot. And that's a lot of personalized learning and you'll be surprised at how much they really learn. So there's all so many ways, but the biggest thing, be creative. Enjoy your students. Um, don't, you know, even if we have like a, oh, what is the word? Um, a book like, um, ah, can't even think. A basic book, you know, hello, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. And you, well, you can always do that. You can use grammar. You can use your vocabulary. I use vocabulary a lot. Um, so you have a lot of formative assessment through Kahoot and it really, really works. They will succeed if they study before class, especially. Um, they will succeed and those students, my students do it. They do the extra work. If they don't think it's um, homework. Okay, next. The traditional classroom, we stand between the students and the knowledge. So we teach. Instructor is inflexible with your expectations of the timeline and assessment. Um, instructor is a primary source of information. And the instructor is the primary source of information. Oh, well, I typed that twice. <laughs> See, sometimes you make mistakes. Um, oh, I actually typed it three times. How incredible. See, for my students, if I make a mistake and they see it, they get extra points. So if you saw that, you get extra points. Okay, flipped classroom. Um, they have the direct access to that knowledge. So you have to work a little harder to get the um, quizzes up. But once you can learn how to do it really quick and you have a system, it goes very fast. Um, instructor is more flexible in expectations of the timeline and assessment. So you know, because of Corona, we um, need to have a, f a little bit more flexible expectations of the students getting things finished because, of course, they're working on their own most of the time. Um, in class time, it's dedicated to more exploration and more in-depth study. So again, for me, Usually first day is kind of explaining the lesson really quickly and then we do activities and then on the second day, if I have a second day, which I usually do, um, I do all gamification. There's so many other ways I use gamification besides Kahoot. Um, I use a spinner on the... Um, yeah, a spinner on the computer and I put their names in and of course you have to do that before class and I, it stays there for the semester and that's how I get individual students to speak up uh, willingly okay um, in structures we curate all the diff different things together and give it to the students um, I usually do LMS, I have Kahoot, I have the flow um, code, and it's always available to the students in all those different places in wherever they are. Um, 
and also individually, you give them time to come to your office or whatever and enjoy their company and practice speaking together. Small groups and give classroom feedback. So it all works out. I really enjoy the flipped classroom because when they come to your classroom, they understand what you're saying because they have the knowledge already. Okay, let's talk about open-ended questions. Um, open-ended, we often use um, close-ended questions and we always get yes, no, okay, right? Um, Open-ended questions are designed for a meaningful response based on a person's feelings, thoughts, and knowledge. So, how do you feel today? Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I feel fine. Not bad. Um, what is your favorite memory from childhood? They have to think of something to give you instead of yes, no. Okay, I think sometimes that's what happens to us is, is there a book? Yes, there is. Do you like pizza? Yes, I do. So we can learn how to reword it. What kind of food do you like? What's your favorite food? Oh, I really like pizza. Why do you like pizza? Okay, so open-ended questions are so nice to get the students to talking. But if we only use is, do, would, could, oh, yes, no, when, yesterday, where, over there, etc. In conclusion, communication is very important. Develop your CQ and understand learners' cultural communication. Use your self-assessment and learn what works and what doesn't work in your classroom. Limit your jargon. <clears throat> Be aware <coughs> excuse me, of verbal and nonverbal cues. Be aware of your body language. Be aware of your preconceived notions and cultural bias. <coughs> and become more aware of needs of students. Um, self-thinking about all the things that you need to do in your class moments. Just like I spent a lot of time f trying to do these escape rooms, but in the end, it really didn't work. So you have to do your self-assessment and say, oh, I can see, I can tell the students aren't getting this. So make it more simple and easier for them. Um, Definitely over communicate with your students. I use Kahoot. I use this. I use that. I use band to communicate with them. I, I have LMS. That's like four or five ways to communicate. The more you communicate what you want, the more those students will know. Okay, you have to have the patience. Show empathy for your students. Don't just think, oh, Korean students don't learn. They are stupid. Sometimes I've heard that and it's sad. But show that empathy for the student and try to understand from their cultural view um, and build a rapport will be the biggest asset in your classroom. Um, students will also learn through your patience and persistence. Be ready for the lesson on Zoom as you would in the classroom. And be a collaborator with the students. Okay. The end.